is the reality that some kids are going to school and it's overwhelming. It might, you know, they really might equate school with uh, being lonely or not having it be accessible, having it be really difficult, overwhelming. Maybe it even feels hostile, whether that's from a set, not even just from kids, but from the sensory environment. Um, so how, how do we take those kids who really like have averse reactions to something in school or they really don't feel successful or positive and how do we how do we still get while well, while honoring their experience still try to to turn that around for them even just every day so it doesn't feel so monumental right and i think you know and i hear that and i think it's really important what you said is that maybe sometimes the important thing is not like to join them on that, to normalize that, not to be able to turn around. Because like you said, if they are having a hard day, to say this is gonna be a great day, uh -uh. like it's not, it doesn't quite work like that, right? Like, nothing, it's ponies and rainbows and all that. So part of it is recognized to say that, yeah, you know, today might be a hard day. You know, it's okay to have a hard day, but I think we can always um, reinforce, we can always um, sort of, um, promote that our ability to be able to do something like yeah. Yeah, I can get through it mm -hmm. right and I think that's more motivating because a lot of time if we have so much negative messages I can't do it I can't do it this is too hard I shouldn't try and over and over and over again that's the message that we send ourselves that's the story that we have created for us it's not to say that hey this is easy go have fun we're gonna be an awesome day you know it doesn't quite it's not realistic, it's not believable, but to normalize that, hey, you know, this is a hard day. You know, today I am gonna have some challenges, but I, I can tolerate it. I can get through it. Being mindful of how your emotions and your behaviors are impacting your child. I know that sounds really tough and it's a lot harder. It's a lot, it's easier said than done, I will say, because Obviously, if your child is hurting, that's not going to feel good for you either. What that means is, again, figuring out time or figuring out different strategies as to how you can kind of regulate yourself. Um, it's not going to be, it doesn't need to be like going to yoga and then going to brunch or like taking a two hour bath or like something like that, because who has time for that? Like, let's be real. It's being able to check yourself in the moment. So let's say your child is experiencing a meltdown and it's really frustrating for you. That's okay to feel that way. You're a human, it's totally okay. Taking like a couple steps away or sitting on the floor and taking a couple deep breaths to center yourself for literally 30 seconds, that can be enough to kind of help you be able to help your child. Because again, if you're not in a good headspace, it's gonna be really hard for you to support your child who's really struggling as well. This is a time I think we should recognize, you know, I think school has always been like learning, learn your alphabet, learn this, learn that. Doing this period of transition, it's, I think it's good to give ourselves, parents and kids some permission to recalibrate and set a goal that makes sense for us. You know, so today it's gonna to be a hard day. I'm gonna just be there and try my best to be in the classroom for five minutes at a time. I'm going to talk to one person instead of I'm gonna make a new friend, you know? So I think really um, make, a re uh, make the expectation um, reachable, but also just really promote the kid's own ability to be able to handle it. Because I think our kids are tough. They're really resilient, but we, we want them to believe that because yeah. they don't a lot of times because there's so much neg mess negative messages has been sent to them or they send it to themselves. You have so much power to set what your values are for your family. So even if a teacher kind of poo-poo's your child for something, they have that inner wisdom that you've instilled in them that we don't really value that. Like the W sitting. I don't, I, I was told by a professional, I shouldn't do the W sitting. You know what? I'm doing the W sitting and that's it. And I don't care. And I don't care about my, I think my hips, whatever, probably I'll care at some point, but you know, we have to make our own, our own value system. And, and I think it starts with the family and the parents. And then you model that you don't necessarily care about certain things that people say. And then if you have to fine tune it, if your kid goes too far, 
you know, you fine tune it. Everybody has to go out of their comfort zone to some extent, but we want to give them some liberation through the parents okaying of certain behavior. And there's also ways to conceptualize any situation and see it as an experience as opposed to something bad that's happening. I mean, I think obviously if something is happening and it's hurting somebody, you want to validate the sadness or the loss or the fear, but also you want to reframe it as what is this teaching me? How am I collecting information that I can use later in some way uh, in my writing, in my connection to my own children, in my connection to my patients. And the same can go for anybody. If they start to reframe, this is an experience. This is like something I'm collecting to give me more wisdom. Then it's no longer just that. <laughs>